Hello everyone, this is uh, Professor Gant and I am here to give you a short preview of how to use my math lab um, while you're in your e-college classroom here at Arts. So, if you notice I'm already in the e-college module here and you'll see your first my math lab assignment in uh, module one assignment three which is where we are now so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and click on the my math lab link here and then you'll see your assignment okay so i've already kind of been playing in this um but when you click on this you'll get here and so um if you go to question one this is kind of what it will look like okay now as you read these questions, uh, remember I've made lecture notes to help you out. But of course, um, those lecture notes won't cover every single question um, in detail that you will need to know about. So in order to help you here, we have these aids called uh, Help Me Solve This, View an Example, uh, the textbook, and as well as Ask My Instructor. And so I'll go through each of these with this particular example plus another example where we actually have to plug in numbers okay so let's say we read this question here and for some reason or another we don't know how to work this so we have two options so our first option is um, we want the system to help us guide us through the problem so we would click on help me solve this in this case and so depending on the type of problem that you have uh, some problems um, they'll you know, have you read a little bit, then enter in an answer. Um, other problems like this one where it's not a lot of calculations, they just have you read a lot, and then after you kind of read over what it is that you need to do, then uh, you would go ahead and um, enter in the answer choice. So if we look here, um, what it's trying to do is give you the information in bits and pieces um, enough so that you can understand what's going on. Okay. And so what you will want to do is read this and, and try to work through the problem so that uh, you can understand what to do next. So we see here, all right, to create a list of cases in a coin, toss, let H represent heads and T represent tails. And so it's just explaining all of that. Okay. Then next it will say if two ordinary uh, coins were tossed one possible solution is th how many other outcomes are there okay well let's say um, you have no idea and uh, let's say you just press five it's going to tell you no you're not correct the total number of possible tosses for two coins is four and it tells you subtract the number of tosses listed from four okay so <clears throat> we keep on going here and so we'll see of course if you have no idea then you're looking they'll tell you what the correct answer is okay and so now it says list the other combinations taking order into account okay and let's say you have no idea on that so let's say we press six and then it'll try to give you an idea or a clue on how to solve the problem. Okay? And just keep on going. And then you'll see here, if you, were, you if you were thinking that you needed to type in a number here, you see that now you'll need to um, type in these letters. So the H representing heads, T representing tails here. So you see here that it says use commas to separate answers so this kind of gives you an idea of what it is that you actually need to do okay and so each problem will be different but just letting you know that hey if you don't have an idea what to do or how to get started then um, one of the tools that you have is help me solve this <clears throat> another example that you have is view an example so view an example is like a close cousin to help me solve this. Um, one of the differences in between help me solve this and view an example is that if you noticed with viewing, sorry, with uh, help me solve this, we started off with one problem, and once we got through it to help me solve this, the problem has changed. Okay, so 
with view and example, it'll take us through the same kind of thing that helped me solve this did, but there is no interactive piece. So you'll see that you're just reading and they'll you know give you answers, okay? So <clears throat> that's the main difference. So if you just want to get a quick overview of how to do it without the interactive piece to it, you will want to do view and example. <coughs> And so um, after we finish and close here, you see that now the problem stays the same. So what you've done is you've used an example of another problem. But, um, but you still have this problem to solve. And so basically the way that the system works is that it's telling you that you're going to solve a problem by yourself one way or the other. Either we're going to help you solve a problem and then you do another one by yourself, or we're going to show you an example of a problem and then you'll do the one that was given to you by yourself. Alright, at times you'll probably need to refer back to the textbook. So here we can go to the textbook and what this will do is take you to the exact chapter and section that, um, that you'll be working on for this particular problem. So this particular problem here um, should come somewhere out of chapter one. Sorry, um, let me look at this again. Yes, so this is going to come somewhere out of unit one, sorry, meaning chapters one or two. And so, the way that this is set up, you see this contents thing here is not um, darkened, so that means it's confining us to be within um, this particular section here, <coughs> section one. So what I'm going to do is keep on clicking and try to get to the end of this particular section. Okay, and so you notice, notice how it put me right back to the beginning of section 1.1. So the advantage of having your textbook available to you within a problem is, is that it does give you access to the textbook. Um, the thing that's not so great is that you can't move on to different sections in the textbook. Now the purpose for that is to keep you focused on the, the section where the information uh, that you really need, um, they keep you confined to that particular section in the textbook. So um, you shouldn't have to look in chapter 7 for things that are in section 1.1. And so that's the point. Okay. So just know that sometimes uh, you'll need to refer back to your textbook um, while doing a homework problem to kind of you know, relearn and get a better understanding of what's going on. And just know that it is there available to you. And it's going to take you to the exact section that you need in order to um, help you figure out how to do a particular problem. All right, so the reviews helped me solve this, view an example, and uh, the textbook, and you still have no idea, then that's when you need to contact me, okay? And so when you send this email to me, what will happen is that I'll get an email in my inbox and I'll know the exact question that you're on and what I need you to do is type a question to me and the more specific you are the, the quicker I can get to your answer so you just do this and send then if you have a particular question about a, a problem I can um, look at it in my email and get back with you as soon as I possibly can and so um, that's pretty much it with the tools uh, the the only other thing I want to call to your attention here is what this stuff in the uh, you know under this box is and so at times you'll see instructions here like this one says use commas to separate so here um, what is asking you to do is to make sure that you use commas every time so if we look here I'm going to um, do the other options here so let's say we got um, heads tails tails heads and then tails tails okay so this is how it wants it written if you don't put the commas in 
and you just do this, it probably won't read it correctly. Okay? And so it's going to give you all this information. So it's one of the reasons why it's important to actually do the comments here. Oops. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I already gave that. It should be heads, heads. Okay? And so you see, if you do what it, the system says do when answering the questions here, um, you should have no problem getting them right. Okay? Alright, so we'll save that. And so, this basically gives you an idea of how to work in my last plus now as we get further along and we get into doing more and more calculations um, it'll be very imperative that you list well you read and you pay attention to how to enter in the answers sometimes the answers will say round to the nearest tenth other times they'll say um, you know type in an equation and so there's very specific things that the system is looking for and so if you pay attention to what the little blue writing says by the, the answer boxes, then you should be able to get it right. If you have any questions as to how to enter that stuff in, then by all means, please email me. Um, actually, you can do like how I did with the uh, Ask Your Instructor feature and just click on that and let me know what question you had and just ask me, all right, well, how do I enter this in? And so um, I can respond back to you and let you know. Alright, if you have any other questions please email me or give me a call and uh, thank you for viewing this video.